right, so we're going to talk about the atmosphere a little bit. What is atmosphere? Anybody? It's atmosphere. It's air. Okay, air. Any other definition for it? It's all the gases that surround us, okay? So it's not just oxygen, it's all the gases. So we're talking about CO2, hydrogen, everything that's around us, okay? I want you to write down these terms. First term is weather. Now I know we all think we know what these terms mean, but experience tells me that we don't. Weather is the condition of the atmosphere at a given time and place. So what exactly does that mean? The condition of the atmosphere at a given time and place. There you go. It's all the conditions in a specific place at a specific time. That is your weather. Like now, since it's raining outside? Yeah, you could say rainy is weather. What's the difference between weather and climate? Uh, the climate is the temperature. Well, so like, we weather can be temperature too. Climate is like long term in a certain area. There you go. Your climate is your average weather conditions over a period of time, right? So. Climate, the average of all weather conditions over a period of years. Are they always going to be the same? No. No. You might live in a desert, so your climate is hot and dry. But it may be a rainy day, and your weather could be cool and rainy. Okay? Get this written down. You will have to be able to tell me the difference between weather and climate. That's pretty easy, right? Weather is specific, climate is an average, right? So, what's the weather like right now? Rainy. Rainy and? Hot. Hot. Now, what's our climate? Hot. Just hot and dry. We, we, we tend to be, you know, we're not real dry, we're not real wet. We tend to be hot this time of year. Humid, but not a lot of rain, right? Yeah. Everybody got this? So when we're talking about the atmosphere, we're talking about the Earth's circulation system. What is a circulation system? You use this term in biology. What does it mean to have a circulation system? Uh, the way air flows. On Earth is the way air and water flows, and our body is how blood and oxygen flows, right? But Earth has a circulation system too. And if you're ever out at sea, you'll, you'll discover it very quickly. There's, uh, there's, there's tides that come in, and the ocean currents will move, and winds move. And this is how we move all the stuff around on Earth. And you can kind of see how they, have, you know, towards the center of the Earth, the direction they go, and towards the top, the direction they go. Um, if you're ever out on a ship, anybody ever been on a cruise? Did you cross the Gulf Stream when you did it? You'll know if you did. When you cross the Gulf Stream, the water gets deep, deep blue and beautiful. And then you get past it and it gets back to that gray green color, right? But that, that right there, the reason it's so blue and beautiful is because it's right here where, where these currents meet and it filters all, it filters everything out. So you get this beautiful blue water. It acts as a filter, like a lungs for the earth, okay? All right. You've all been to the beach. You've all been to Galveston or Corpus or somewhere, I'm sure, at some point. And you felt the sea breeze, right? When well, you're out there and the wind's rushing in from the sea, right? What causes the sea breeze? Wind? Well, what causes and the wind? The circulation of different landforms. Okay. What happens is all day long the sun is baking down on the earth, right? Yeah. And the earth is getting hotter. And because land is going to absorb heat better than water is, right down, the, the air over the land is going to be hotter than the air over the water. What does hot air do? 
hot air rises. So the land gets hot and the air above that warms up and it rushes up. And that leaves a big hole. Now, nature abhors a vacuum. Nature doesn't like a vacuum. It wants to fill it. So what's it going to fill it with? Cool air from over the water, right? So this is a diagram, but if you want to do it easier, you want to say you have land here and water here, okay? The land gets warmer, so the air goes up, right? And that creates a hole, and this cool air rushes in from the sea. That's a sea breeze. That's pretty simple, right? What do you think is going to happen at night? Uh, it's not hot anymore. It's cold water. It's going to go down over the land first. And this heavier, heavier air is going to fall and push this out. So you'll have a land breeze. You always name it after the direction it's coming from. Okay? So sea breeze is coming from the sea. And land breeze comes from the land. Does that make sense? Okay. You've all felt this before. Sunlight heats the land, warm air rises, and cool air rushes in from the sea. That's sea breeze. Land breeze is the exact opposite. Write it down. The land cools, warm air drops, and the cool air rushes out. But that's exactly why it's always so much more comfortable at the beach. It's because there's almost always a breeze at the beach going one way or the other. And it's just because land and water heat and cool at different speeds. The same thing happens near large lakes. Small lakes, you don't notice it so much. But if you get on a large body of water, a large freshwater lake, this will happen there too, okay? You've seen this out of lakes, haven't you? You can feel that breeze. But you're not going to notice it on a stock take. You're out in a half, you know, half acre pond on your property. You're not going to notice a breeze off that. There's not enough difference. Okay? I go too fast, y'all tell me. How about a tide? What's a tide? Isn't not the stuff you eat, not the tide pods. Isn't that where you. Uh, where the water rises and falls just depending on the way that the moon is? Yeah, it's, it is where, the, where the, the oceans are actually pulled by gravity depending on how close, the, how close the moon is to the earth. Okay? It's the gravitational pull of the moon that's helping to cause this. This is why when you go out of the ocean, you'll see that there's a large difference between where the water is at high tide versus low tide. You ever been out of the ocean, you know, sitting out there, not paying any attention and tide rushes in? All of a sudden all your crap's wet? And... Yeah, yeah, that's tide. You ever been fishing that way? You ever have fish that way? Deep sea fishing? It's illegal in Texas, so don't do it here. But, but uh, you can go out there and you can dig a big hole in the sand right at the tide and as the tide comes in, when it goes back out, the fish will get stuck in that, uh, in, in that hole and you can just go gather them. Yep. And it's illegal in Texas. Don't do it in Texas. Okay. Here's an example of tide. If you look at this, this is the same place. This camera did not move. But at high tides, the boat's floating. At low tide, there's no water in there. Tides can be massive depending on where you are. At different places on the Earth's surface, the tide is bigger. Outside of, yeah? When, since that is on the ground, when the tide comes back, is that boat just going to be stuck down there? Or is it going to no, it'll float up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there, uh, in Korea, during the Korean War, as we were taking our, our ships in to land people, we had to time it perfectly because the tide is the biggest it is in the world there, a place called Pyongyang. And Maybe ships had two hours to get in and drop them in and get out, or they would have been uh, dry docked and they may have been in trouble. Tides are very, very important, okay? You can get stuck very quickly in a, in a low tide. You can also lose your stuff very quickly if you leave it there. Yes? 
down in Florida, that happened, and the tide went so far down we couldn't go walk. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. You remember greenhouse effect from science class? Yeah. What is the greenhouse effect? Where it takes all, all the moisture and heat inside. What causes it? The heat from the sun. Okay. The trapping of radiant energy. Radiant just means heat energy from the sun. And it's trapped by carbon dioxide, CO2. Where does most CO2 come from? Most of it comes from us. Because when we breathe, we breathe in oxygen and we breathe out CO2. But cars put it out on a large scale. Air conditioners put it out. The old spray bottles with CFCs put it out. New ones don't, most of them don't have CFCs. Uh, but carbon dioxide gets up there in the air and it traps radiant energy. The energy gets in to the earth and it bounces off, but it doesn't have enough power to go back out, so it just kind of gets stuck in here. What happens is that CO2 works like a greenhouse does. Y'all have all been in a greenhouse before, right? You ever been, like, below something, walked inside the, the, the greenhouse? Oh, it's, you know, 15 degrees warmer in there than it is outside? That's what we're doing is we're building a great big greenhouse around the earth with CO2. Yes. Greenhouse in a called Martian. Okay. Put your hand behind your head. Now knock the dumb out of yourself. There you go. Did it work? I haven't seen that movie. All right. So the problem is over years we've built this massive uh, collection of greenhouse gases around the earth that has caused average temperatures to go up. What's the problem with average temperatures going up? Uh, ice will melt. Eventually, eventually ice will melt. That's the wrong one. You don't have to write all this down, but you get the gist of it. Um, the first one, get the one, and, one, two, and three. You don't have to get all the, all the other stuff. So because of increased pollution and carbon dioxide, we have higher temperatures. This is put out by burning things like wood, coal. It's also put out by large amounts of livestock production. All this puts out lots of CO2. And CFCs have been causing our ozone layer to collapse. And the ozone layer is what prevents some of that radiant energy from coming in, in the first place. Okay, we have a great big hole in our ozone layer that's causing a lot of problems for us. Here's the problem, it warms up, our glaciers start to melt. Now, a certain amount of this is natural, okay? We've had ice ages, they've ended. But, a 10 foot rise in the sea levels would flood almost all of our coastal cities. A three-foot rise would leave 72 million people homeless in China and 11 million homeless in Bangladesh. Galveston would be gone. Most of Houston would be gone with a three-foot rise. New Orleans would be gone. So it's a serious situation, okay? Only three feet. Only three feet rise. Houston and New Orleans are both below sea level. By the way, so is Washington, D.C. Uh, they're located below sea level. I'd kind of be okay with Houston being gone, but you know. I'd be okay with having a closer beach. It wasn't that the capital of the United States was below sea level. Yeah, we were just stupid. That was a deal made between Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. If you watch the musical, you know that. Y'all got it? All right, so this is Venice. Venice, Italy. Now, Venice is, is, is a series of, of islands that have formed a city-state in Italy. And 
it used to be a fairly safe place. But now, over the last 10 years, it floods almost annually. And this is what happens. This is the ocean coming in. Yes? Don't they kind of like ride around in boats? They do have gondolas. They, they have roads that are, they just have, have boats on them. So this is what we have to look, look forward to. Here's a map. <coughs> if the current ice sheet that we have in Canada were to melt, and it's melting right now, these would be the new borders of the United States. We have a beach right here. No, we wouldn't have a beach right here. We're there. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. No, we'd be part of the ocean. There'd be a beach in Dallas. We wouldn't have a beach. Oh, We'd yeah. be the beach. Nice. <laughs> Florida be gone. You could go to Dallas and have oceanfront property. Not good. I mean, so much for Houston. San Antonio is right. San Antonio would be near the ocean. That's really kind of cool. Louisiana. Look at this. New York would be Memphis. Right in. Memphis is underwater. That's, that's the Mississippi River that's flooding. That whole area. Alright. It's pretty cheap. terrifying. The only good part is you wouldn't have to worry about Florida man anymore. <laughs> and the whole Caribbean's gone. I know where New York. New York is gone. At least the island. All right. That's all I've got for you today. You've got the rest of the period to work on whatever you owe me. Check your Google Classroom. I think I have all your grades updated in, in uh, Skyward. If you think I do not, let me know. I may have missed something because you turned it in late. And I can fix it, okay?